one's not going to be joining us later on in the week. Uh, so maybe there you go. It's recording. Is it? Mm. Right. You just need to turn off the recording at the end of the session. Which is? Click on the team at the bottom here. It's on Teams, OK. I didn't click on it now, you'll lose it all again. But if you uh, click on that button at the end, you should click stop. Recording. So it's being recorded on? So it's already recording, so you can cover it. Yeah. Fabulous. Let's just see who's, who we got. Let's go. Do, 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 do. Send. And rest. If you. Um... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not If you go to just timetable. You've got all time missing your module on that, so keep that safe. I need a small coffee for you. Okay, thanks, Rufin. <laughs> no one after this, okay. But things after, after I'm going to take them round, round the place as well. So it's. Uh... Right, let's guess who's, who's, who's fab. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we just got the MRES Biomol Techno up and running. You, you were the first one that uh, inquired. It must have been back in February. Before that, before Christmas. Before Christmas. Yeah. This is not a student. <laughs> no. Did I disappoint you? No, well, we're, we're missing two. We're missing Shinjini. And oh, I know, at Susina. From Mexico, she's she's actually in Luxembourg at the moment. At, uh, there's a, a, a meeting there, and she asked if she could, could join uh, later in the week. And I think Jeannie actually is missing the foot. Yeah, there's someone who's not going to be here for the for, for the rest for the latter part of this week. Who's is it? You, Isha? No, someone is going to be away. Thursday and Friday this week. Oh. Hello, Robin. How are you? Coffee service. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee service. <laughs> when you get old, this is what happens. Hold oh, on, I'm okay. I'm just, uh, I just had coffee. So, uh, this is that old Dan. Anyone know know what this is? Okay, so this is recording now. Okay. Yeah, do you know what that is? Uh, yeah, I know. Slide rule. That's right. It's usually, usually a, 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 good, a good a good pointer. Good. Okay. So uh, uh, we're recording this. So we're, we're two two on here. Uh, this is Gleb, by the way, Gleb Yakubov, who be one of the mainstays of the uh, the the MRES, uh, at least until you do your industrial placements or industrial related projects, but. Uh, as we're recording, we can get the uh, uh, the show. On. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, guys. So first of all, thanks for choosing the uh, the the, the MRS in in biomedical technology. Uh, this is a uh, a course which is uh, technically new. This is the first year of. The uh, course in this format, uh, but it it's got a history in a sense because it's evolved from uh, other courses which we've been running here, and jointly with the University of of, of, of Leicester uh, for quite uh, a long uh, a lot lo long time uh, now, and the. Uh, the, the the thrust of the course uh, essentially is to uh, train uh, people like yourselves who come from uh, various disciplines in 
uh, in chemistry and and and, and, and biology uh, into uh, uh, biomolecular uh, technology uh, situations in industry or uh, acad a a academia. Because I guess uh, the reason why you guys have chosen uh, a master's course is as a, a bridge either into uh, doing something else in academia or going into you know, industry, the biofarm, uh, biotech or, or food uh, industries or, 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 or something uh, like that. A bit like me, because uh, uh, many, many years ago, I know it's hard to believe, but uh, I was young once and so was, uh, so, so, so was Glad. But uh, I uh, did my first degree, it was actually in physics, and I wasn't quite sure uh, what to what to do next. So I did a one year master's course, uh, which had an industrial placement, or it was actually a placement at the uh, Atomic Energy Research Institute at uh, a place called Harwell, uh, south of Oxford, uh, which is now the site of a a large synchrotron and uh, neutron uh, facility. So uh, I did my uh, uh, my MSc. I did an MSc with a placement uh, there. It was absolutely marvellous. It uh, gave me time to decide uh, what I'd like to do in terms of uh, my my career. Because I graduated, I was only twenty when I graduated, so I was as green as a cucumber. And it just gave me that time to. Uh, sort out uh, what I was uh, wanting to do. It gave me uh, industrial uh, experience, experience working in a, a, a research uh, uh, laboratory. It gave me experience in, in scientific writing because we had to write a, a scientific uh, report, a dissertation at the, uh, the end uh, of it. And uh, it, uh, it opened doors. So that was the best decision that I made in my scientific career was to do a, uh, a, a, a master's and it had a four month, four five month uh, project uh, placement. It was arguably the best time of my uh, uh, my, my, my life. So that was the, uh, defining uh, for me. So uh, when, it, when I got the chance as an academic here to uh, set up uh, my own uh, master's course, I just jumped at it. I so thought this is a, a great opportunity. And the good thing about uh, uh, an MRES is that it is uh, largely research. An, an MSc is mostly teaching and uh, with a research project at the end of it, the eight to ten week uh, project. Uh, whereas a uh, an MRES is the uh, reverse. It's got a, a teaching element, but a more substantial uh, research element. Uh, and in those days, there wasn't a distinction when I did mine. It was just called an MSc, and it varied in terms of the uh, lengths of the uh, the research that uh, you, uh, you 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 did. Uh, so, uh, in the case of our MRES, it's essentially one third teaching taught modules and then it's two thirds research. And uh, the idea is that in your first uh, semester, uh, that's when you decide on what research project that you want to do. Uh, I know there were some difficulties with the the forms and registration and things. Uh, this is, I'm not making excuses, but this is not uh, unusual in uh, the university system, especially when you've got a, 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 a newish uh, course that is coming out. For example, I think when you try to register, uh, you <laughs> you can only register for 170 credits or maybe less than that because uh, one of the modules was actually missing from the list 
And thanks, folks, for alerting me uh, about that. I think it was Glycan Biotechnology and another one, is it Technology Entrepreneurship, uh, which had prerequisites which you, you didn't satisfy. Okay. All right, sure, sure. There's a kitchen just along the corridor, but you know, you know, sure. Right. So, uh, yeah, apologies uh, for that. That should have been rectified this morning, I think. So, from now, you should be able to. Uh, did anyone actually register successfully? Did we register on our course on the module as well? Yes. I wasn't even prompted to do that. So. Okay, we'll, we'll get that sorted later. Okay. Uh, this is the idea of the first week really to get these the, 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 the teething problems uh, sorted, uh, which we will do. And also on the application forms, it was demanding that you give a research project of some sort with a 3000 word uh, research project, despite telling the uh, admissions team that it's not not needed for this, this MRES, all the students have to to do is to okay, indicate the research area that uh, you wanted to, uh, to to do. So apologies to those that wrote a wonderful 3000 word uh, description of the project you're doing. You can't actually do that until we've assigned you a, a proper uh, research supervisor and then find out what uh, what you uh, what you want to do. And I think the idea is just to wait a bit, uh, wait just a few weeks until you properly decided and you see all the uh, options. And in particular, in uh, October 19th, so in two weeks' time, two weeks' time, two weeks' time, uh, we're all going down to, hopefully, all going down to uh, Cambridge to the molecular interactions in uh, biology uh, meeting of the. Royal Society of Chemistry. So you're going as as as, as delegates. You don't have to pay. It's all covered by uh, your fees and, uh, and 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 things. Uh, I'll say it's more about this in a minute. It's something we've done uh, for the last 10, 12 years uh, with the previous incarnations of the incarnation of the uh, the, 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 the masters. But uh, right, let's just. Uh, so I know bits of you, all of you, because you've all gone through the, uh, the, the the rigors. I think you're all sort of nervous about it, and this turned out to be a rather informal interview in the the end. I suppose you could give you a more rigorous one. Maybe you felt a bit short short changed uh, about that. I could ask you about amino acids and all this sort of stuff, but uh, uh, I didn't. Because you all did brilliantly in your 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 degrees, you uh, you come here, and uh, so Glenn and I are expecting a great deal from you guys, aren't we? Yeah. Well, I think what I'm expecting is what you guys have good fun. Mm. Of course, because I think we're going to learn a lot of things. There will be a lot of opportunities to interact with the industry as well. It is. I mean, it's not all enjoyment. You've got to work. Uh, and with an, uh, a master's, a one year master's, the important thing is it, it hits you straight away. You haven't got time to sort of accommodate and you know, have a few weeks doing this. It, 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 it's straight in, especially the first semester, because getting all the teaching stuff out of the way preparing you for the uh, the research uh, second semester and the summer period. You realise doing a master's course, you don't get a summer holiday, folks. It goes right through till uh, next September. It, it really does. And it goes through for us as teachers till next September as uh, well, but because we enjoyed so much. Like, it's uh, and it is because at master's level, and maybe I shouldn't say this really, but at master's level, all you guys, you are already professional scientists because you've already got a professional science uh, degree. 
So in that sense, you, equivalent to, to us, uh, we are also professional scientists, although we like to think that way. Uh, so we're all uh, professional uh, scientists and uh, we treat you uh, like that. So there's a, you notice the difference between when you did your undergraduate degrees and uh, master's uh, degree. And you all come from undergraduate degrees. No, no, not none of you have already done another master's or something elsewhere, not as far as I, I know. So uh, if you're comfortable, then we usually uh, speak on, on first name terms. That's what we do in, 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 in science. And uh, the, the rules are usually uh, the people that you know, uh, you can refer to them by the uh, first names unless they've indicated they prefer otherwise. Uh, but people you don't know, uh, you refer to them by their official names, you know, Mr. Doctor, Mrs. Professor, uh, this, unless they give you uh, a sign. Otherwise, uh, it varies between cultures and countries. Uh, the Germans, for example, are, are, are usually very correct, and you, you have to get really permission before you can use first name. And they like loading in the titles, you know, doctor, professor, you know, that help a lot. Uh, the, uh, this looks like it must be Shinjini or Atsudina. Yeah, greetings. Buenos dias. Yeah, buenos dias. Atsudini from Mex Mexico, yeah. Yeah. Or buenos tardes. No, buenos dias. Yes. Uh, yeah, I see that. Did you get fine here all right? There was broken. I thought that automatic, automatically should be open, but no. <laughs> so it was a broken door. It wasn't the fault with the car. It wasn't the cards then. Right. You okay, Isha? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is this is a great thing now. We've all come out of this black hole called pandemic. Yeah, it's like going through the Kuiper belts or something. Uh, it's or, 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 or Star Trek, the, the great, uh, probably too young for Star Trek, but the great barrier on the way to the sun. I don't know. It's like that with this pandemic thing. And we've all been affected. We must have been because you've all done your degrees. You, you, you probably come up with the worst, really, because it must have hit you right in your second years and gone through to the third. Right, that's why you're probably grateful that this MRES is more practically based than a and Is that why you chose us? No, well, different reasons, yeah. yeah. So we've, we've all come out of this uh, awful uh, pan, uh, pan, pan pandemic. So, yeah, uh, who's that? actually my mission? No, I can't ask this question because I have COVID, but uh, yeah, we. I managed to avoid COVID right until the end. And uh, I got this B4, B5 thing in the summer. And it was interesting. Did you get you catch it, Lev? COVID. Yeah. yeah. Managed to avoid it because you're younger and stronger as well. Yes. I don't know. It's just random thing. Yeah. I had my booster on Friday. Less all these tests, you know, like this lateral PCR, because I had it like now I'm, I've tested negative, like I've tested, we went to this Abraham Heights, you know, like this. Abraham Heights. Yeah, yeah, Abraham Heights. So we went into this tapes, and first Alice caught a cold, and then I called her, and then we've tested several times, and it was like negative all the time. So we just expect it's just this cold from this. Uh, Lead mines. Yes. Uh, well, right down there. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Yeah. So they have the Punch and Judy there as well. Sometimes they have a Punch and Judy show. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So this something, guys. 
I mean, it's the, they treat. Matlock, anyone been to the Heights of Abraham? Obviously not, you haven't seen it. Yeah. Anyone seen the Punch and Judy show? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, yeah, it's it's not far from me. That's it. If you if you're new to this, you you new to this area, East Midlands, Nottingham, uh, we're not far from the uh, the Peak District. Yeah, and then Dovedale. Yeah, essentially, it's not a bad thought if you can count that the start the Peak District starts because you already start having this outcrop of the country street. So you need a mate with a car. If you haven't got a car, so you need a mate with a car. And that's what, what I did when I did my masters. So you can go because the math lot has a train station as well. Yes, you, you got it. That's right. You just go to Derby and from Derby go straight to, to, to math. No, you catch a bus, uh, the free bus. You get off at the Clifton. Oh, this is the first day, by the way. So it, it's not always like this with trivia and all this sort of stuff. Don't, don't worry you've signed on for a, a Duff course. Uh, believe me, it's not. It's not good. We've trained over the years, what, a thousand students and some professors at Harvard and goodness knows where. So it is a good course, folks. But this is our rambling day. Uh, but not just, yeah, you know, so you get, you get the bus, the free bus to who's actually caught the free, obviously the, the three issue of uh, piece of love. Who's, who's actually caught the free bus? Help of us, yeah, because it stops at the tram station always at Clifton. Then you can get the uh, the tram, tram to Nottingham Station, and then from there you can get to the uh, the peaks. It takes a while though. I live in the peaks, and it's a three-hour train journey or a fifty-minute drive. So you live in the peaks. So we've got our official tour guide here. He's probably bored to death with the place. Yeah, yeah whereabouts? Uh, do you know Palisage? So just yeah, it's there. beautiful. It's near, it, it, that's where the what's it called? The Fox. Uh, name that. Fox House. Fox House. Yeah. That's right. Palisage, just right next to uh, Baslow. Yeah. And what's the name of the uh, famous place? Stanisbridge. Castle. No, what's it called? Oh, by the Cavendish family. Oh, Lou John's. Chatsworth House. Chatsworth House. Yeah. So Palace is right in the middle of the peaks. It's a, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got Rutland Water, not far away. And you've got Nottingham, of course, with Robin Hood. And just for you, they've uh, reopened the castle after, yeah, we told them the MRS course was starting and they uh, said to get a move on. And they, they've done it. Who's been to Nottingham Castle since it's all been done? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Those with children or grandchildren now. Yeah. nephews. Because yeah. Nottingham is definitely uh, wiser than us in Germany. It's definitely uh, worth going to. It's just got all the roads made, Marion May, Friar Lane, all this. It's got the oldest pub in Europe. The trip to Jerusalem, uh, the Eliza Nak Jerusalem, and it's also got the second oldest pub in Europe, which is the. <laughs> you know, anyone? Peter, you should know this. Oh, linked by a cave tunnel. It's the old Salutation Arms. <laughs> yeah, which is on Maid Marion Way. That's linked to the trip to Jerusalem. Yeah, it's full of very drunk people. Not <laughs> <laughs> traditional football. Yeah, and then also you Forest are back in the Premier League, which is also good. Not that I'm a Nottingham Forest supporter, but my, my son is. My son is. Well, they started well. Now they they down to the bottom. Oh, they play Leicester tonight. They're both bottom, bottom yeah. on there. Yeah, it's very important for the course and the university that we have a. Nottingham Forest is the premier. Well, we should show them the oh, clips. So you say, if you go through the slides, then I haven't got Forest on this one. No, no, but the uh, our football team. Oh, our football team. Yeah, we've got we've been better football team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, this is just a little uh, promotional slide uh, showing the. Uh, the 
yeah so it's a one-year research course uh with an industrial focus that's why you signed up for this i guess although it doesn't constrain you to a career in industry yeah i did an industrial research project and i'm here okay uh so it doesn't but that experience that you get is i think very very important uh well you can see that with the covid story it was an example of industry and academia uh, working together hand in hand cutting all the red tape because they had to move uh, very fast uh, it's happened uh, only only once uh, before uh, really uh, but with the with the development of penicillin yeah that was another example of you know cutting the barriers because you know all the, you go through all these different trials and things but uh, covid was an outstanding uh, success story of academia working with industry germany america russia and uh, here with the oxford astrazeneca uh, example a wonderful story so uh, and that's how important it is to have this interaction uh, with industry because they've got the finance they, they've got the uh, ability to produce uh, your science and getting it out to the the people that uh, need it you know these research labs can't uh, do that you've got to interest uh, the big the big companies uh, so yeah uh, so it's industrial focus for training molecules uh, molecular assemblies uh, not just COVID, but glyco vaccines and other things. Uh, the methods used to uh, produce them and to understand them, to characterize them, to check that they do uh, what uh, you want them to do and don't do other strange things, you know, side effects and things, they put aggregation and other stuff. So uh, methods for uh, probing that, uh, formulation, uh, well, techniques which is linked up with the uh, with, 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 with the methods. So it's a, a course, a research based course, uh, which is focused on the molecules, molecular assemblies and the techniques. Used to uh, understand these processes, which is uh, OK. So on the molecules, now I'm getting this thing at the bottom. OK. Uh, DNA, of course. And uh, but all, proteins, uh, glycoproteins, glycoconjugates, uh, sugars, uh, carbohydrates. And this is something which maybe you. Uh, I know you come from different backgrounds, uh, biotechnology, uh, biochemistry, Soviet biochemistry, genetics, biology. Uh, family of biotechnology. Yeah. Jack, you're a biochemist. Yeah. Uh, Roshan, a biopharmacy, biopharma. Yeah, pharmacy, chemistry, that's right. And Atasena, biology. Yeah. So uh, you've all come from those sort of backgrounds. So you, you know, you've probably met uh, nucleic acids and uh, proteins uh, a lot. Maybe not so much. Uh, carbohydrates and uh, this is one thing about this particular MRS or at least the tall part uh, we there is a we say focus but we give equal importance to to carbohydrates and it's trendy name glycans now because of their huge importance in, 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 in molecular recognition and like this this is a model of a uh, a glycoconjugate uh, vaccine uh, against uh, meningitis, so you've got a protein core, could be a tetanus toxoid protein or something, and then you've got these uh, uh, polysaccharide uh, fragments which have been taken from uh, the, the bacteria which is being uh, being attacked, uh, and that's uh, several companies involved with this: GSK, uh, Merck, uh, antibiotics, glycopeptide. Antibiotics, vancomycin, tycopanin, and things, uh, where the sugar component plays an important role, uh, and that's because, and 
the so-called spike protein, S1 protein, isn't a protein, it's a, it's a glycoprotein. And it's the sugar part uh, which plays a, a key uh, role. So proteins, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates, I'll show you how they, they built into all this. And uh, looking at the properties of these, uh, these uh, molecules, molecular assemblies, this actually is output from a technique known as the uh, analytical ultracentrifuge, which is the gold standard method uh, rec uh, recommended by the FDA. FDA? FDA? Food, Food and Drug Administration. Yeah, the, the similar agencies in, in Europe and Australia and the Far East and things. But the uh, regulatory authorities uh, like this technique, it's called the gold standard method, uh, for checking on the integrity of monoclonal antibodies used for you know, various therapies against cancers and things, and used to check that the molecules are uh, behaving themselves properly. They're not aggregating or, 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 or dissociating, uh, particularly at the very high concentrations, uh, over 50 milligram per mil, which are used in, in monoclonal uh, formulations. So, uh, so navigation, uh, light scattering, and if you go to molecular biology, PCR, all these different methods. Uh, so it's an important uh, for us as biomolecular technologists to have at least a, a knowledge and you know working understanding of uh, how these techniques uh, operate. And if you want a Nobel Prize in biological science, folks, then you've got more of a chance of winning one if you deal with developing techniques than applying them to uh, the molecules the techniques are designed for yeah not that you're going to be winning nobel prize maybe you are yeah that's all, that'd be great we're not, not going to nobel prize winner yet from the uh the masters uh, courses right so where do we live uh, well, this campus, which has got all these fantastic multi-million million pound buildings and things all over the uh, uh, the show, then there's a small water cabin like uh, building, uh, and that's where where we are. Uh, it's the Limes building, and we try to find the water tomorrow. We'll go over after this. Actually, we'll go across there. So it's just behind this sort of. Uh, space age building here, which is the bioenergy and uh, brewing building. But just behind there, there's this attractive single story building. Uh, and that's where, well, that's where I live, not Gleb. He's in the uh, food science building, which is uh, just on the, the, the right uh, here. But the just a tiny bit of history. Uh, the master's course, this master's course, though it's new, actually uh, it goes back uh, many years. It goes back to uh, 1987. I came here in 1984 as uh, a young lecturer. I was a postdoc in the uh, in the biochemistry chemistry department at, uh, at, at Cambridge and I was lucky enough to get a place here and then in uh, 1987 uh, what happened was uh, I came here and uh, as what was called a, a new blood lectureship which was designed to bring in new uh, research into uh, departments and uh, university schools and things so I got one of these new blood positions uh, all those years ago, bringing in new stuff. And my ex expertise uh, was in uh, studying the solution properties of macromolecules and macromolecule assemblies. So not sort of crystal structures or this sort of stuff, but the behavior in, uh, in, in, in the solution, where many, which is the natural environment of 
of many biological macromolecules, DNA, enzymes, all this sort of stuff. They operate in an aqueous and uh, in, in, not all of them, but uh, many uh, of them. And uh, I had this expertise uh, in hydrodynamics. Hydro means water. Uh, we haven't got any Greek, Greek students here, we said to do the uh, and dynamics is just movement. Uh, a macromolecular macro is big. So uh, big molecule uh, water movement. So looking at the properties of, of molecules in solution and from these measurements, uh, working out the sizes, uh, shapes, uh, how the crystal structures might change in these uh, watery environments and most importantly interactions how molecules interact in solution, which it underpins, underpins the whole of uh, biological uh, science. So uh, after coming here, uh, I had all these requests for favours and all this sort of stuff to uh, uh, from different labs around the uh, around the country. And then uh, my old boss in, in Cambridge, a chap called Richard Perrin, suggested, why don't you make a, a, a centre? You know, and that, that facility for this. And so uh, he was then <laughs> chairman of the Biological Sciences Committee of the Research Council. So uh, I went, uh, put this application in and it got funded. And that's that was the, uh, the start of the NCMH National Centre, which was joint with the University of, of, uh, of Leicester all those uh, years ago. And then there was an approach from the uh, Department of Education for us to, why am I seeing the whole that screen? OK, uh, let's go. Get rid of that. Screen. OK, this thing at the bottom's covering the last bit. OK, so we were approached by the. Department of uh, Health and Education because there was a shortage of people trained in biomole technologies uh, for jobs in the expanding you know, biotechnology, uh, biomolecular biotechnology industries which were cropping up uh, everywhere. So they uh, supported uh, ourselves with Leicester to set up uh, a master's course. And uh, ever since we've trained over a thousand students. Uh, and uh, this is the. History, so we started off as biomech technology MSc. Uh, joint with the University of uh, Leicester, which is a, a good place. This is the birthplace of forensic genetics, you know, and uh, so Alex Jeffries, and, uh, you know, he's the DNA fingerprinting, and more lately, Richard III. And uh, we have a, a Leicester representative here, we're proud to, uh, to, 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 to say. So this was a, a good thing, having this joint thing with uh, Leicester. But then when my colleague at Leicester retired, uh, we moved the whole shop to here in uh, Nottingham. Uh, there was some overlap because the, the old course ran from January to January and we started the new course here in October. So we, we gave it a slightly different name, uh, Applied uh, Biomolecular uh, Technology. Uh, and then uh, after some years, we developed a, a, a sort of business element because uh, a lot of students were interested in entrepreneurship. And that was uh, the uh, applied uh, biopharmaceutical biotechnology entrepreneurship sister course of uh, applied biomolecular technology. And then we also had a, 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 an MRES, but that was more uh, geared towards people already working in in in, in industry and uh, yeah that was a great success and that ran till uh, 2020 to covid yeah 
and you can see this lot, this, see how happy the students are, it's, uh, people doing master's courses here. This is this actually get graduation. That was 2018, uh, that lot. Uh, but then COVID gave us a, t a chance to uh, reassess. Uh, and the reason why is that our colleagues in industry uh, were not. Uh, they were happy, but they were not overly thrilled with the short project times, because by the time someone was trained into the methodology and things and all that sort of stuff, it was time to finish, time to uh, to, to to write up. So the the short eight week project uh, was a problem, which we'd you know lived with for this you know long time, uh, you know twenty three years. We'd we'd we'd, we'd uh, uh, we'd operated with this, but then when Kobe came, we've been thinking about this for for quite a while. Uh, this was a chance to change the format to uh, biomolecular uh, technology, and there was also another MSc course in biotechnology, which was uh, filling the gap for those that wanted the uh, the MSc uh, format. So the decision was made to set up the MRES in uh, biomolecular uh, technology. Uh, again, this is Greg's acronym. I was going to call it Biomoltech, but BMT sounds OK. Yeah. Well, I thought of BT, but that's like Bush Telecom. That was probably not to you know, BT Sports. BMT. There's nothing bad with that same acronym, is there? OK, so that's what we're stuck with. I mean, we're open to, you know, other suggestions, folks, because it's it's your course as well as uh, as well as uh, ours. So that was the. The new format and we've also we basically built in entrepreneurship into this uh, as well. So uh, this is how it's going to work. Uh, we've got a series of uh, of taught modules uh, this uh, semester, so you have to work, folks. Yeah, and uh, to get the MRes, you, you're required to pass these modules. So there's no exams; it's practicals, call uh, coursework. Uh, there's a group mini project, which we built into uh, this module here, uh, Glycan. Uh, bio uh, technology. So there's a, there's five core modules which you all have to do, and then you get to choose uh, one of uh, these two: genetic analysis and bioinformatics, or technology entrepreneurship. If you're really keen and you'd rather like to do both, well, you can do the maybe this one and do that one, but without doing the assessments. So if you want to do the genetic analysis as well as that, it means you've got to work a bit harder, but there is that possibility. But these five here uh, you have to do. Fundamentals of uh, biomolecular technology, and this gives training in basic genetic and biophysical principles. Some of it will be stuff you've done before, it'll be revisions, some of it will be uh, very new, depending on what your backgrounds are. And some will be going into a bit more, a bit more detail than what you, uh, what you've done uh, before. There's basic lab techniques. Uh, when what I experience with industrial placements is that uh, when our students go into industry, uh, the companies are not so much interested in if you can you know, run an X-ray crystallography instrument or an NMR instrument or you know PCR, you can run all the control. But more interested is if you can do the basic things. You understand buffers, ionic strengths, you can dilute uh, properly, understand what serial dilutions mean, all this sort of stuff. Uh, so the basic skills, I mean, we had one student one year was uh, it was given a, a pasta pipette and was using it without a, a tip. 
so this sort of thing and using a spectrophotometer, understanding how it works. And again, another student, uh, Dr. Hardy, really a rather high reading from the uh, absorption here. And then you look and, and you see they put the cavette, you know, those, those two sides of a cavette, which you've got these little serrated so you can pick them up easily. And so you put that in the light beam. So what they were, just watching, were observing was a diffraction of the light was static. So you know, basic things like that, uh, which uh, some people think are daft, but they're not, unless you've been trained or, or, or been shown before how to operate things uh, correctly. So, and then there's some advanced practical methods. That's Gleb does that. Yeah. So to work. Yeah, no messing around here. We'll the mess around today because uh, later on today we've got the first uh, dose of uh, of that. The three biotech undergraduate students. Did you do some of that for your under uh, basic? No, not that. Okay. Right. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, yeah we did. Some of that already. Okay. We have to do like um, or well, everyone has to do a like uh, induction for the labs. Do we have to do that again, or will it be? Um, we'll see what they say is happening for you three, because you're familiar with uh, with with the surrounds. Yeah. Okay. And we'll have a chat. Actually, uh, later on, I'll have a chat with the three. Three biotech. Two, four. Fam. Yeah. Have a chat with you guys. Okay. Because if there's there is some overlap with this, then maybe we can uh, we can sort uh, something else out. Okay. Uh, I've got an idea for that. So that starts tomorrow, uh, and that where's that going to be, Gleb? Uh, where's that? Where's where's this? Where's that going to be? Chance. Well, next door, just through it. I think D or five is taking over. I think it is B five, yeah. B five, which is upstairs, and I think it's on the left as you go upstairs. Next, big. So those of you that are not didn't do your first tree here, clam onto these guys, okay? <laughs> right, uh, Jack. Sylvia, Rosanne, as I say, if you can just watch these guys. And then uh, I think Shinjini will be joining us later on in the week. We'll have a special uh, word with her uh, too. Yeah. OK, uh, so there's that. Then there's glycan backed biotechnology. As I said, uh, we try to uh, bring in sort of carbohydrates in uh, a significant significant way because of the, uh, their increasing importance. 20, 30 years ago, sugars, carbohydrates uh, were deemed as the sort of poor relation compared to proteins and uh, nucleic acids. And if you're working on polysaccharides, for example, you know, your friends in biochemistry would uh, just think, you know, well, well, what's, what's going on? This is not very exciting, but uh, nothing could be further from the, uh, the, 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 the truth. So uh, we've got a whole module on uh, glycon biotechnology, which includes a, a group mini project. And uh, we'll split you up probably into, if there's nine of you, into three groups of, uh, of three, uh, working on the characterization of a, a glycan, probably be an, a, an antibody, or like a vaccine, probably uh, an antibody uh, of some uh, description. And then you'll get uh, experience there. So you will get lab experience in this course, unless there's another pandemic. <laughs> it, it really, honestly, it really was bad for us as well, because we had to think on our feet, you know, what we're going to do, you know, to, and when we'll be allowed back in the labs. Uh, and you guys must have been really frustrated having to do teams, 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 
all the time. But now's your chance to really let go. Uh, and then, uh, so the antibody biotechnology, that's uh, right at the beginning of the second semester. So we try to get that out of the way as soon as possible. So by mid-February, we want to get clear of the taught uh, element with the exception of technology entrepreneurship, which does go through. So if you choose that module, uh, we'll need to work out a way of fitting that in whilst you're doing your, uh, your, 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 your research, which could be a business-based project. We've had students do business-based projects uh, before, or projects in uh, patenting or, 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 or regulatory issues. Uh, there's, uh, again, there's uh, some some possibilities there. Uh, we had actually uh, one of your predecessors, I have to say, uh, uh, Jasmine, uh, she did her, I'm a Jasmine, Claire. Yeah, uh, she did her placement with, uh, with, with, with GSK on a regulatory based uh, project, which is a great success. Uh, Jasmine. OK, so. Uh, yeah, so that one will go through and we'll, we'll work out a way uh, around that. Uh, this one starts late November and goes through again to uh, till February. Then this is the main thing, the uh, the, the, the research uh, module, uh, which uh, runs right the way through till August. That's when you submit your uh, research, your, your report, your dissertation, which will be in two parts. Uh, so it contains a review element, a review paper, a research paper based on the uh, the work that you do, and then that's so you submit those, and then there's a presentation and uh, Fiverr in September with the external examiner, like any other postgraduate research uh, degree. So it's a bit of a hybrid course in that sense has got a bit taught but it's research uh, focused so you have a uh, an MRES Viva in September following a uh, presentation so that's the uh, research uh, module and at the end of all that uh, you get, if you get through all that you get the MRES and uh, it's a bit different from an undergraduate degree uh, or you don't get first classes and second classes and all this sort of stuff. Uh, it's a bit different from an MSc, you know, distinctions or this sort of stuff. But uh, instead, uh, there are these uh, prizes. Uh, there's the the Beckman Coulter Prize, and that goes to the top student on the course. So you will get marked for the Viva, and these will also have marks uh, that go uh, the go uh, with them. So if your top student gets the Beckman Coulter Prize, and if you gain uh, an overall 70% or more, uh, then you get the the, uh, the white technology uh, prize prizes. So that's how it uh, operates. So let's hope this time next year we're we're celebrating uh, these things, and let's hope by this time next year you. This has been the springboard to something else. You know, you could continue on the projects onto you know, PhD. Some people do that. Obviously, the funding is the place, but that's it. Uh, all right, right. Okay. So, in week, two weeks on Wednesday, uh, we're all going down in a bus to. Just one second. What? Is it Wednesday or Tuesday? Because 18 is Tuesday. That's a typographical mistake. And Blev is good at that. He spots errors like that. So we can just quickly correct that. Yes. I was wondering how long you'd take to spot that one, Blev. Yeah. Did uh, you? Yeah. <laughs> it took you about a second. So you can come down because of the typo. Oh, I can't. Really, 
figures. I thought it is only 18. It, it's a shame that it's, it's just a matter of a few hours. Yeah. Because yesterday I had to fix uh, the books fiber and I fixed it on the 19th because you go, yeah, I thought you go on the 18th. On the 18th, I, I take, I'm, I'm getting to, to from Paris back to the UK. And um, I kind of, I didn't realize that it is on 19th and I fixed yesterday the, the virus day for, um, not for Thomas, for Paramount, the day okay. the next week. Yeah, well, we'll let you off there. Yeah. But yeah, you'll I'm miss out because it's a fantastic trip. Yeah, sorry about that, Claire. The ego. Oh, yeah. talking of the ego, uh, uh, do you know the significance of the ego? Yeah, that's right. That's the ego. What is the significance of the ego? That's the ego. And um, what's the significance of this bicycle shed here? <laughs> this is Cambridge, so we go, that's where we're going in. Uh, in a fortnight's time. Uh, actually, before we just go to that question. Five minutes ago, it was announced that not twice, the physiology and medicine goes to Neanderthal DNA research and Santa Pablo uh, from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Biology will get the Nobel Prize. In Germany, presumably. He's in Germany, but he's Swedish originally. And, so. It's a very appropriate for Nobel Prize because should. Yeah, yeah. So Sweden. I think he's of, I think he's of uh, Finnish origin, but Swedish. And... Fantastic. So he was in the Neanderthal DNA. Neanderthal DNA. So it's all ancient DNA. So he kind of pioneered yeah. a lot of stuff. In all honesty, I, I, I think if not this this time, but next year, uh, Sarah Gilbert should get. The Oxford lady yeah. behind the Oxford and, and the people in that, uh, the Turkish folks in uh, in the Biontech. They should be Nobel Prize winners, absolutely. But these things take a long time to come through. It's like Watson and Crick. They got their DNA model sorted in 1953. And they didn't get the Nobel Prize until in 62. It took nine years before they got the Nobel Prize. I mean, Svante was much longer because I think he started in 2005. OK, so this is the, this is the MI Bio meeting in Cambridge where we've been going every year for the last uh, 10 years with the masters and you're the predecessor of the ABT course. Uh, that's because I'm an organiser. There's me and there's, uh, there's four colleagues from industry. There's a guy from uh, AstraZeneca in Santa Park, Cambridge. There's a guy from Santa Fe, Bernardo, uh, he's at uh, Boston. Uh, there's uh, GSK, uh, that's at uh, Stevenage. And there's a, a smaller company called Small Medium Enterprise called Aracor, which is uh, near, near Cambridge. So there's four guys from there who helped to uh, organize this thing, which is a, it's a, A meeting we held every year, and it's a meeting bringing together experts from industry and uh, academia. And this is important for you guys because if you're formulating ideas for where to do your your placements and things, this is where you meet them. And also, we meet former master students who did uh, our course all those years ago, who now are in key places in the industry. They, they come to this. So it's a it's a fantastic day out. Uh, what we you see. Now, I mean, some of you already had experience of working with industrial companies. I think how many people have actually done work? Yes, AstraZeneca, wasn't it? Yeah, Jack, you too. Um, and they 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 work differently from universities, and it's uh, this is one of the reasons why we. We have this industrial focus to give you an idea of how you know, industry thinks, which is uh, a bit different from academics. They get fed up with academics. So we tend to be slow. Uh, it's a lot better now when they interacted with us. Um, the industry would rather, if they're, if they're collaborating with, 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 with academia, 
they'd rather pay more money and get a reliable response than pay. This is what we were guilty of in the past. We were so grateful. Oh, thanks for the fiver. You know, that's great. And then the report would come back a year later. <laughs> so they, the industry would rather pay a high money and get a professional uh, response from their academic colleagues. But that's, I think that's a, a lot, lot better than what it, uh, it, it used to be. And academia at one time used to regard industrial money as sort of, you know, not as good as getting research council money. That's all changed. That has changed uh, completely. So yeah, we, we're all going down. We'll be setting off about 6.15 in the morning, folks. Yeah. How many of you are based actually down here? One, two, or you're based in Loughborough? Yeah. How many are based around the Nottingham area? OK, so you catch the bus. Yeah, so what we do is have a pickup at East Drive at 6.15 normally, and then 6.45 here. And we don't hang about. If you're not here, we're away. Simple as that. Uh, it's a good idea to let us have your phone contacts and things so we can uh, we, we chase you up. Uh, so we get there nice and early at nine o'clock. And then what happens is at lunchtime, uh, we, because it's down in college, and we can just come, come out of there lunchtime and then we as a group we head to here which is the new museums site this is the group from 2019 this is the last group we had before the pandemic this is the old abt course so what is this building here okay somewhere important scientifically in cambridge What was the most important discovery made in the last century? Is it the Crick Institute? No, it's not the Crick Institute, it's actually in London. It's right next to St. Pancras Station. But you, you're there basically. It's the old uh, uh, Cavendish Laboratory. Uh, and there's a big plaque saying here, that this is where the discovery of the double helix was made. Actually, it's not true. The discovery was made here. So the bicycle, it's a bicycle, well, the bicycles and bicycle racks. Uh, this was where the old uh, hot, uh, this was an extension of the uh, the cam dish. That's where Watson and Crick was. When I was a postdoc there in the early 80s in the biochemistry department, uh, that was then uh, like a, the, the building was still there. It had smash windows and things and bicycles were in there you did you know the most important scientific discovery of the previous century and this is cambridge a, a bicycle shed with bikes parked in in there and then they knocked the knocked the thing down completely and converted it to uh this but the old building was reminiscent of the the line this building, which is where the NCMH is. So whereas those people working in these multi-million pound buildings like Gleb in food science turn their noses up to our little innocent prefab uh, building, it was actually created on the, the Watson Crick model. Yeah. And uh, as you'll see in a minute, you'll be very impressed, I'm sure. Or does it get, get you in that frame? Uh, yeah, so it's just like the Watson Crick Labs. No, this is an old building once knocking down. And it won't be knocked down because they've just built on the end of it uh, an ancient DNA facility. That doesn't mean that ancient people are working on DNA. It means that it's studying uh, ancient DNA, uh, mainly focused on, on plants, as opposed to Leicester, which have got its focus on uh, old bones and things and with the master's course uh, we have a secret santa uh, event which has been postponed for the last three years so we're really looking forward to this did you go to the last one Glenn? did you go to the secret santa yeah, yeah. 
Was it? Did you and David Gray? Were you open? Were you giving? Were you opening the? Yeah. yeah. Or was you two? Were you there for the sing song? We missed three. Three. Well, we had had one online, didn't we? Which wasn't quite um, the quiz. Yeah. You were sort of win that quiz anyway. We, we, we had one in um, in the barn, you know, like one of these, uh, like a staff room in the barn. You remember? That was 2019, was it? That was it. Yeah, that, that wasn't here. That wasn't this one. No, 2019 was the last one. Yeah. That wasn't that. That was taken in the afternoon. Yeah. Pulling off it down. That was 2018. Yeah, 2019 was great actually. We uh, and what we do, we all uh, meet up and uh, we usually time it so it's the same day as uh, degree day. So if you all successfully graduate next year, you'll get your degrees in the December uh, degree day. Okay. And what we do is we time our secret Santa for the same day as the uh, degree day. And the reason is that the, they have all this food for the degree day reception. They always over cater. There's always tons of stuff left over. So what we do is at four o'clock or five o'clock or six, um, we have our do. We just take all the food that's been <laughs> left over. <laughs> so, yeah, that's called entrepreneurship for you folks. All right, so that's what we do, uh, and uh, it's a secret Santa, which we're delighted to say is going to take part. It's going to, going to happen again uh, in December, probably the last week of uh, of 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 of, of term. And we had a football team. Yeah, now there's all males there. Now, of course, football's changed now because uh, women's <laughs> is. is uh, has gone up in leaps and bounds, and uh, the the World Cup the World Cup was fantastic. But there was there wasn't the World Cup; it was the European. It was the European, the European. yeah, because the Americans won the Women's World Cup, but uh, we won the sorry, you know, we uh, we won. Uh, I'm sorry, we won. But again, it doesn't matter because uh, Vietnam and Mexico can't compete in the European. Can they? Well, the Eurovision Song Contest, they, we have Australia and uh, <laughs> we're fans of the Eurovision Song Contest, by the way. It's, it's uh, not a long, long story. This is our football team, but well, before it closed down, and you see a good international representation. That's Abu Bakr from Nigeria, who was the manager. <laughs> I don't know what the heck that is on his head. And as any football team has, we have a German goalkeeper. This is Hans Jörg Gurska. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were we were good. So that means we need to uh, nine. I don't know how to do that. Actually, we have to combine. But uh, okay, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Any any footballers? Okay, Captain Peter. And we'll take on the biotechnology people or or, or, or whatever the other uh, MSCs, MRES is. Uh, it's it's an idea actually. Have a little. So that's uh, something to look forward to. But certainly the secret Santa in in uh, December. Right this week, folks. Uh, so this is me uh, saying this. The Gleb and Mig Lev will take you around in a minute. We'll just uh, have a little tour uh, of the pre tour of the campus and the MCMH. Uh, there's lunch. This is not a free lunch, folks. Your, your free lunch comes uh, tomorrow. And we've changed things around a bit. This is a bit different from the provisional timetable we we, 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 we sent out. Well, provisional is always a good word actually because it means if you get something wrong you can uh, alter. So we'll give you a little tour around in a minute. We'll take you over to the very attractive Limes building. <laughs> and then uh, break for lunch and then at two o'clock you've got your first uh, lecture. Is that right? MS Teams. I think that's correct. Yeah. 
OK, so you've got to find your way back to. A computer That's a point that if you're marooned out here. How are you going to get onto teams? Laptops, yeah, OK, from somewhere in the library. Here. Um, what I suggest is that um, those guys who don't have a laptop, uh, you go, go you, you take it to the library because there is an opportunity for. Uh, there is plenty of uh, PCs there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think okay. it would be the easiest. But they may want to take their own laptops into the library anyway. The space, so we and you can be... take a laptop in the library as well, and then have a kind of really quiet, uh, find a quiet spot. Or you could operate in the NCMH. You come come over to us. Yeah. That's another thing. Because some people are away at the moment, so the space. Jennifer and Co are away. So space over with us. Problem is that the food sciences, everything is. Um, is taken today all our meeting yeah. rooms before but your day. base you've got two bases while you're here uh one is us okay that's the ncmh and uh you can't have a desk there yet but if you uh, when you do the group mini project you have uh desks and if you do happen to do your placement and it's based here working with industry as opposed to going into industry or whatever uh, or you can have a base or have a desk in, in, in the NCMH, but it's you can use the NCMH as a base with some floating desks there anyway, or the Graduate Centre, which is uh, on the second floor in the wonderful barn building, yeah, which is now open for food and things on the the first floor it's really come to uh, life anyone been to the barn apart from the four home people anyone been to the barn building yet yeah it's okay yeah on the thing at the bottom the jukebox all that sort of stuff and it's, uh, it's all right yeah uh, right so yeah what we're talking about yeah so you can you, we can find you a, a space to really do your to, to do this teams later. We'll, we'll sort So them. shall we shall we take them into the library? To show the library first. first. And then show the bus stop and then go around to us and the NCMH to show people briefly what's right. in it. So we'll just over the there. library yeah. and then we'll take them to NCMH. NCMH. Yeah, that should be enough. Yeah. And lunch. OK. Uh, then lunch and then you you do that online introduction. Uh, then there's this by this person here, Dr. Gene right. Yakubov in BO5. Potentially, effectively, eleven weeks. But um, uh, just a couple of sessions. The rest will be live. And we'll okay. And then we moved the icebreaker session from. Was it Friday? We originally had it. We moved it to. Yeah, we thought it'd be nice to get because you need to know who you all are. Now, uh, to, as soon as possible, really. we'll see if we can get Shinjini to join us by teams. If we can, so that's going to be tomorrow now, uh, and that'll be May 36 in the, the food science building. So we'll show you where that is. And it'll be like a round table and what the icebreaker, there's no breaking ice, none of that. Some students actually believe that in the past, really. <laughs> Well, you should, shouldn't, shouldn't laugh, but I suppose if you, language, you know, it's that's logical, isn't it? That's only because English is very peculiar in that sense. With phrases like 
put that in your pipe and smoke it. Again, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, does it really? Uh, oops, oh, hang on. Uh, so, oh, then you've got more gleb after that. It's computing gleb in B08 main building. Yes. That's at the back of the library. You need to get there through the library. Yeah, yeah. So this one is the practical uh, that we would have, uh, the literature searches. You know, would you need to know for your uh, dissertation or how to do it? So on top of science, we try to um, give you some information about the soft skills. Um, and this will be about the, the literature searches, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. But mm -hmm. we also have a practical, so we'll sit down and uh, you know, what you can contemplate about the literature search is what topics are you interested in? And we can try to illustrate how the literature searches will work for a specific topic you are interested in. So mm. please sleep on this uh, tonight and then tomorrow just be prepared to, to, mm. uh, to use that topic, your idea of what you are interested in to do the literature searches in this practical mm. session. Sounds good, Claire. I would sign up for that for me. Yeah, sounds all right. <clears throat> and then tomorrow, uh, when, so Wednesday, uh, you meet the uh, director of postgraduate studies. That's Ravinda. You know, the, the the lady was in. For those who here first thing, the lady brought me the coffee. Her office is actually just opposite. That's Ravinda, and you would have met Ravinda, I think, when you did your uh, undergraduate. So uh, Ravinda is. Head, she's uh, director of postgraduate studies. Uh, you meet also the, because there's other MRS students here. We're the main MRS body, believe it or not. Uh, there's one of the biggest MRS courses in the university. So eight, nine students for first go is fantastic, really. And it's just right. Uh, when we were running ABT and things, we had as many as 50 students one year. And uh, it was just impossible to get to know the students. Possibly, uh, you didn't you lack that personal touch, which is what you need in a master's course. But in my master's course, there was uh, six students on on the course, and that was great until we got, went out in the industrial thing. So this is just a, a, an ideal number. It's not too small, uh, and it's not too 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 big. Uh, and you get that sort of personal, personal touch, which I think is uh, is good. But I'm, I'm biased because I'm director, so don't listen to me. Uh, okay, and then uh, I think after that uh, there is the library. Okay, then we have the official library for. Uh, oh, it's online. Oh, well, that's right. So we will actually see the library when you are going through to in a minute. Uh, that's online. Uh, there's still an online element to the course teaching, by the way. Some online, but it's largely face to face. You're probably thinking of, gosh, if it's that bad, I prefer Teams anyway. I don't know. Right. Uh, face to face is good. And don't forget, as us lecturers, it's taken us time to get used to doing face to face. Again, as was clear at the start of this session. Where we're trying to work out how to record and things. Right, so uh, then Thursday, it's the start of the uh, fundamentals of uh, bio molecular technology uh, module. And uh, this. Is uh, I'll introduce uh, that and then we show this film. So the, this, the first week is sort of you know, just getting ourselves in. Uh, how many people have seen the life story film before about the discovery of the double helix? Yeah, it's quite timely because the, uh, the double helix uh, was discovered. It was the twentieth of February, nineteen fifty-three. Just a few weeks after King George the Sixth died, so it was the last time we had 
a change in, in monarchy was just before the, the double helix uh, was uh, discovered. And the Watson Crick paper was published in April 1953. My mom and dad got married in uh, August 1953, so it was uh, a momentous uh, year. It's a fantastic film. Uh, Jeff Goldblum, uh, uh, American actor, uh, he plays Jim Watson, better than Jim Watson. And uh, Tim Pickett Smith plays, who died a couple of years ago, he plays uh, Francis Crick. And Julia Stevenson plays uh, Rosalind Franklin. And it, it's uh, a great film, so not about the science, just about science, but also how scientists interact, how they collaborate or don't collaborate and the various barriers, the various etiquettes that have got to be followed, sometimes broken. OK, and you now some of the inequalities in science uh, as well uh, come out and it's a it, it's it's quite an emotional film, really. So it's a great film. Uh, and then not many people know this, but I might have mentioned this during the interviews when I was talking to you guys that uh, Nottingham actually played a huge part in the double helix discovery because it was here that the bonds, hydrogen bonds and DNA uh, were discovered uh, by my old boss actually, a guy called uh, Michael Preeth, who was a, a graduate student like you guys in 1947, did the definitive experiment Using hydrodynamics, okay, oh, what's that? You know, use it to show to prove that the bonds, hydrogen bonds, and DNA existed, uh, which was crucial to the Watson Crick discovery. And in the latest edition of Double Helix by James Watson, uh, it includes uh, a lot about the, the Nottingham contribution to. The uh, discovery. Okay, that's that. And we uh, we do that, uh, and we introduce nucleic acids then uh, as part of Thursday. So some teaching in the afternoon. Then on Friday, uh, we start off the uh, glycan biotechnology uh, module, uh, and we actually made a, a couple of changes to the uh, so because Isha you asked for some was Isha or Razan who, who one of you asked for was, was it you Razan no was it you Isha wasn't it I asked for the timetables in advance but they were only provisional because we need to change a few things uh, around a bit so it has been one or two changes uh, with that uh, so do check the Moodle and you can access who's actually successfully gone on to Moodle and access these modules. I suggest you just don't use any uh, timetable because it's never correct. Just forget about the using the timetable. Just always use the Moodle. This is all your references for every module. We mm. put the schedule. We do the announcement. This is our way to communicate with you. Absolutely. Use the timetable on Moodle. OK, for that module. That's the only one that is correct. Not the block timetable, which you give them. Oh, the block timetable, forget about it. You don't need it. It's more or less right, but uh, use the, and now on the Moodle, uh, we haven't got time now, but uh, maybe you'll do it uh, on Thursday. But uh, when we, or you can show them tomorrow, Lev, when you have the first module. Yeah, we, we actually we will do the Moodle thing when, um, during the computer class. That's good. We're already on front of the PC, so. In a straightforward way, so everyone. Yeah, I mean, Moodle is great. I mean, Nottingham we use Moodle. I don't know what they use at Dome. Moodle, that's the Blackboard still. Blackboard is, I, I prefer Blackboard. I mean, in Queensland, we have Blackboard. Yeah. It's less clutter because I find Moodle is not the best. Blackboard is much better. Jack, what did you use? Blackboard. Blackboard. And Atosina. Atosina. Right. 
So that's good. But we use Moodle here. We used to use Blackboard. We changed. I don't know why we changed actually. I don't know. I think they changed because of the cost, because the blackboard right. sounds so it's like money. University because, of because that, that is the problem. Because the blackboard was really, really bad. They switched the business model. They wanted people to pay, but then they provide a really good environment. So mm -hmm. the middle is still free, but you get, that's what you get if you don't pay. <laughs> yeah. I really didn't do that. I mean, I mean, people who develop these things, you know, like they also need to buy food. They also have kids with birthdays. They need to buy them. Oh, no, it's this one. I think it's up, actually. Oh, wow. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't end. Don't end session. No, no. <laughs> What's that one? Uh... Like and biotechnology, wow, that's it. Okay, so that's what you should be able to. You, you can actually get onto it now. They've corrected the, the admissions people have sorted it out. Peter, I'm very sorry. You, you and uh, thanks also. If you see something wrong, let us know. Okay, because we can't. Once we tell us, you know, we assume everything is okay. So yeah, Peter, Isha, also, you've been telling us when things aren't right. <laughs> Two of the people who have been here before actually that the more sort of vocal. Uh, and uh, yeah, but it should be okay now. Everything should be uh, uh, should be fine. And yeah, so there's lots of useful material. There. It's not quite finished yet. So, like, I haven't put the introductory stuff on yet. I'll probably put that on on Thursday for mine. And this is so when you see timetable, you, 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 it's this is the definitive timetable. And if something has changed. Then we make an announcement, which automatically gets sent to your emails. So you automatically informed if a lecturer has got COVID or whatever, uh, you'll be informed about that. But also on Fridays, go back to this again. Where's the PowerPoint logo? Also on Fridays, in the the, oh, here we are. Lunch in the Graduate Centre. This is when you meet other MRES and postgraduate students, and that's being organised by Ravinda. So that's why we've moved the icebreaker to Tuesday, because we've got, that's another free lunch, by the way. As postgraduates, you don't, any free lunch or free things going along, you know, you just take, and we still do it, like with the Secret Santa, we have free food still left over, so we, so that's, yeah, you know, because the fees, you've got to pay fees and things. So it's, yeah, yeah, you, you know this. So don't uh, miss your free lunches, guys. And that's up in the Graduate Centre. That's your Graduate Centre. Hey, you, you've not been there yet, have you? Because you've not been a graduate. I went last week. You did? Yeah, it's quite nice. It's quite nice. Yeah. There's a piano still up there. Mm. Okay, I've got to make sure there's a piano there in December. <laughs> any musicians, by the way? Any musicians? I know you're shy. So we we have we, we do do talent spotting, and uh, and we've had had some good musicians in the past who've given us demonstrations of Wallstein piano sonata and all sorts of stuff that they do, and all sorts of modern pop stuff, yeah, it's good. So uh, that's then, and then in the afternoon, do I have the, the research seminars? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Friday. So I will get, uh, I'll invite you to our research seminar, which I think is a, it's a good sport, and you'll meet our research teams, and I think it will get you into the mood and see how the research projects are structured and sort of topics we're tackling. Um, it's a different set of topics. So, yeah, I think they are good. So between uh, three academics, which is NCMH, um, Austin Software Pharmaceuticals and Bio Interfaces, and Vincenzo's um, Advanced Processing, 
Yeah, I think what's that's great, but I think what one thing is missing for the the group actually is the sort of molecular biology element, which we'll need to uh, think about building building in. Uh, but we'll have a discussion about that because they're all sort of chemical based biopharma. Anyway, everyone's going to be invited because you're all part of the, your postgrads part of our team. I think it's just the team. start of the research training. We get a lot of uh, connection with individual students and uh, uh, postdocs, and I think it's, it's really mm. beneficial for you guys to interact with them and just, just get mm. in, in the mood of doing research. Because this is MRET, so essentially all of you guys have an opportunity to convert it into PhD So we can count this uh, MRES as, as the first year of your PhD. So if there is an opportunity, if you are interested, uh, just talk to us because we might identify the necessary funding avenue for you to, uh, to continue this MRES as a, as a PhD. Yeah, that's one good thing about the MRES. It's a much uh, easier chance to convert into yeah. uh, a PhD, cutting out, you know, one year of a PhD. And it means it, it is conversion, it's not starting a PhD from scratch, it's really, you complete your MRS, just continue to work, and we just count this as, as, a, as one. So normally PhDs are four year, so we would kind of um, have a converted into a PhD, so it will be either four year PhD, which is a standard sort of or three and a half years PhD, so you have two and a half years more to to add this and res and then have a PhD. So again, this is not what we have to decide now, but this is something to keep in the back of your mind. So in case um, you will find a project interesting and you want to continue, and uh, I'll just uh, talk to us and we'll see if we can identify the right opportunity for you. OK, that's the timetable from Glycan Biotechnology. That's that's the sort of definitive timetables you see for each uh, each uh, each module on Moodle. So it starts off with introduction and then GLEB, carbohydrates, and then next Wednesday, mucus and mucins. And after that, uh, we've got uh, this. But just before we move on to the industrial thing, so the group mini project at the end of the this module, that's where you're getting that. It's part of this. Uh, and some practical work beforehand. It's got to be like a protein. Yeah, OK. So this is a, a good module. The PNA, by the way, is a glycan. Yeah. Glycosidic link, not the phosphodiester link, that's not a glycan, but the, the link with the nucleotide. It's uh, either a, a, a one eight, the deoxyribose, or uh, one one link, depending on whether it's pyrimidine or purine base. It's yeah, fun. yeah. It's always fun on the sugar part. Yeah, to add an eight, if it's a is it purine, and one if it's pyrimidine. Anyway, we'll cross that bridge. But that's a glycan. DNA is a glycan. Even DNA is a glycan, folks. So there we go. And mo many proteins are glycosylated, so that's uh, why this module is important. Enough of that. Uh, what we were talking about. Oh yes, back to the the final final thing before we go for a little walk. Is that on Wednesday after Greg's Greg Gleb's glycan lecture on mucus and mucins at twelve o'clock. Uh, Judith Waite and uh, and Nicola uh, will be seeing you probably with me. Uh, for an initial meeting with you to discuss the, the projects, because you've all given given us ideas. I think we've all been in contact with you about those rules. Uh, and then we can start to. This is where the process really kicks in. Uh, so it's uh, next Wednesday. And then we'll identify you know, supervisors and, 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 and take it from and take it from them. And once you've got a project identified, uh, you, there's nothing stopping you starting sort of, uh, you know, researching into it. You have to wait till next semester. That's how it goes. So you meet Judith and uh, Nicola 
next uh, Wednesday in B8, which is again in the left block. Is That's the first yeah. part of the process. Uh, we've got enough, but it's got to match what the, what the MRES, what you lot wants really. You know, we've got ideas, but you've got ideas as well, which you've all given us. I'm going to try and match those two. But I want to wait until we've been to the MI buyer meeting in, in Cambridge uh, to meet these guys. Uh, from industry and the other co-organisers, uh, Nick from AstraZeneca, uh, Bernardo from Santa Fe, Tejash from GSK uh, and Jan, Jan Yezak are all uh, honorary professors of the university. So in that sense, they are, this is recorded, I know, I'll cut this bit out, but the uh, obliged or an American obligated, I like that word, uh, obliged almost to sort of help interact. So we've got a set of, uh, not just in biopharma, but in uh, regulatory, uh, even in Peter, you mentioned bioarchaeology, we've got a, a wonderful project there, uh, which uh, uh, links into something we're doing with, uh, uh, with, with, with Oslo. Uh, so there's possibilities there leading on to a PhD. So there's, yeah, uh, I, I want to wait until you've been to that October uh, 19th, 18th, 19th, 19th uh, trip uh, before we, we firm up or start to firm up. Um, and Jackie wants us all a computer based thing. Yeah, OK. Good stuff. Right, any questions on that? That's what you let yourself in for, folks. I mean, I'm on put my purpose for the interviews was to find out if, from your point of view, this is really what you wanted to uh, to do. Because one more year's money, you've uh, you've got to spend. You know, maybe you've got scholarships and things, but that's uh, that's good. But uh, it is one more year, and uh, I know. Uh, um, my son's still paying back a lot of money. Is undergraduate adventures. Um, that's just how it is these days, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, in terms of books and things, uh, well, there's a couple of things we've got on left online for you. Uh, with. It's quite a nice basic book, it's Self-Assembly of Macromolecules, uh, which comes from the European University. From a course which they thought was too advanced for undergraduate level, master's, uh, I thought it was master's level, uh, which is online. We can give you for self-assembly of macromolecules, but we can give you hard copies if you if you want them. I think we've got enough, but it's uh, online on the Moodle. Uh, there's Things like uh, this, uh, well, that's Walker, Wilson and Walker's Principles and Techniques of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Uh, there's also uh, a book on uh, biophysical techniques. Again, we can give you the, again, because of copyright, you're not supposed to disseminate these things. They're just for use for internal. Uh, internal news. So some of the essential stuff we put online for you, also in immunology and antibody biotechnology, world and papers and things we've we put online uh, for you. So in the Moodle age, uh, I mean, you talk about grade inflation, all this sort of stuff, but it, I, I think it's partly because the teaching is a lot better than when we were students all those years ago. We didn't have any of this online stuff or couldn't watch lectures again, couldn't have recorded. We didn't go to the lecture, there was no handouts. So just different, different world altogether. And now the ability to learn is much, much better. Uh, and in principle, to produce better and better. 
scientists. Which is uh, what we want Team BMT to be, don't we, love? Yeah, right. Absolutely. None of these things always go longer than you expect. Why do I always, always ramble on? <laughs> right, so shall we, shall we go to the 